thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, I'm happy to be here. And uh, I would like to present you, uh, if you know Bourdieu, another side of him, not well known. It's his visual sociology based on photography he took in Algeria in the beginnings of his uh, scientific um, career. I prepared a PowerPoint and um, as we are talking about photography, it would be absurd not to show some of them. So I will start with my PowerPoint now. I'm sorry I don't speak any Spanish, uh, and my English is rather bad too, but I think we, we will uh, have some possibilities to discuss or to have questions concerning my presentations. So, we will talk about visual sociology of Pierre Bourdieu. Perhaps you know a little bit of him. And I hope after my presentation there will be some new aspects of his works which have been presented to you. I hope so. Just to remember, Bourdieu, born in 1930, had his degree in philosophy at the École Normale Supérieure, very uh, elite uh, institution in Paris. He had uh, post as a teacher for one year, and then he was forced to go to, as a soldier to Algeria, where there was the colonial war. And he was absolutely against colonialism and against this war, and it was very hard for him to have to go to there, to that place. And uh, what is interesting now, um, he used the possibility of being in, in the context of this colonial war in order to make testimonies of what he was seeing, what he was experiencing. And he started now, as I will say later on, to have a kind of conversion, biographical conversion from philosopher, which he was when leaving France, to sociologist, ethnologist, anthropologist, which has been, uh, which what, what he has been later on, and he used the time uh, working at uh, um, an administration in Algeria for the French army to write his first book on Algeria, and uh, it was called Sociologie de l'Algérie, and he started doing research together with statisticians from the official statistical uh, administration in Paris. It was very important for him because he learned doing statistical work uh, in the field. And at the same time, he started as an ethnologist doing field work in different places in Algeria. Out of this came a lot of writings. He had some dozens of articles produced in four or five years, and he made four books on society in Algeria and the disruptions going together with colonialism. That was his main project. Main project. He wanted to show the violence of colonial systems. I will, won't talk about this in detail, but now I show you the books he published and what you can see is there are photographs on his books. He shoots them inside uh, his archive with some two or three thousand photographs. He had done this work during all the years in Algeria and photograph was very important for him as he told me in some interviews. I will come back to this later on. What's interesting is that everybody had, he had already some uh, lot of thousands of readers of these books Nobody in the reception of these books talked about what they were seeing on the book. Um, nobody asked Bourdieu, uh, what did you do as a photographer over there? Why did you do that? Why do you choose these pictures? Uh, what in is interesting in visual sociology in order to be a, a sort of complement to the discourses of sociologists? I had the occasion to publish his books in German, I'm going on with the global edition of all his writings in German, and preparing the tr uh, translation of Algérie Soissante, we had a lot of interviews, and during uh, these uh, talks, he said to me, if you want to understand this better, have a look at my photographs. 
So I asked him what kind of photographs. I don't know them. I, I knew I should have known them if I had the books. And he gave to me uh, some seven, eight hundred photographs. Later on, I would find some more, five hundred. So I have now the whole archive of Bourdieu's photographic work. And I'm doing research on this near other research objects. We have made books of these 750 photographs of Bourdieu. And they have been published in, first in France, in French, in German, in Greek, in English. And uh, it has always also, also been published in Spanish, two times even, one in uh, Mexico and another one in uh, Spain. So, what's going on with Bourdieu? I said already, already that he had a sort of biographic conversion. He transformed himself from philosopher. He wanted to do a PhD thesis on Husserl talking about phenomenology of time structures in the effective life. That was his big project, and he has gone to Algeria with this paper in his baggage, in his luggage. And he changed his project, meeting the violence of uh, the colonial war. And he said, I can't go on to make metaphysics. I have to con be concerned with what I'm seeing here at this place. And he started a new project on time structures, but not of effective life of individuals, but of economic life. And what he said to me in this interview several times is he had a conversion of his gaze on society, his kind of uh, looking on social uh, phenomenon. Uh, so what, what's going on in his own words? Um, oh, I, I'm giving you a citation, um, he's telling me to what I'm saying now. Algeria was for him a kind of giant sociological labor lab. That was his uh, expression for this. Inviting him to do to permanent self-training in field work and theoretical work, transforming, as he told to me, metaphysical into empirical founded scientific problems. That was his, his proposal for the next years. Um, talking about self-training of Bourdieu is very important. He never did any studies in sociology, ethnology or anthropology. He learned it in the field, learning by doing, self-training. And I think that would be very interesting for him, that has been interesting for him, because he hasn't been disciplined, he hasn't been uh, forced to read books on methodology to uh, be inside an academic field with very strict uh, codification of rules. He made his own rules by this kind of self-training. Why photography was important for him? He said it was a kind of objectivized, objectization of social realities. And he used the camera in order to sharp, sharpen his gaze on social facts. Talking about conversion of the gaze, conversion du regard, he did this in order to characterize the significance of photography for his conversion from philosophy to sociology. The view through the camera lens forced him to pay a specific attention to the observed phenomena or persons, to withdraw himself from them and to focus on the social reality that was presented to him. That are uh, his words. Uh, <coughs> looking back on the period in Algeria. And one more citation, a little, little bit longer, after that I will show you some photographs. He told me photography that I first began doing in Algeria and then in Béarn and it's in uh, his own uh, country, in France, in the south of France, definitely contributed a great deal to this conversion of my perspective that required a genuine change of my senses, which is no exaggeration. Photography, you see, is a manifestation of the distance of the observer who collects his data and is always aware that he is collecting data. But at the same time, photography also assumes 
the complete proximity of the familiar, of attention, and a sensitivity with regard to even the least perceptible of details. Details that the observer can only understand and interpret thanks to his familiarity. And do we not say that someone who behaves well is attentive? Sensitivity for the infinitely small detail of an act that even the most attentive of ethnologists generally face to notice. But photography is equally interwoven with the relationship that I have had to my subjects at any particular time. And not for a moment did I forget that my subjects is people, human beings, whom I have encountered from a perspective that, at the risk of sounding ridiculous, I would refer to as having often touched. One thing I want to uh, add is Bourdieu, during 40 years, never showed his photographic archive. He put some of his pictures on the three books I showed to you, but otherwise he didn't want to talk about that. As he told me when he gave me these pictures, is I, I was always afraid that people would say the old Bourdieu starts to take himself as, as a, an artist. He wants to be an artist. And that was a special thing he never wanted to be. Uh, he wanted to use this visual, visual sociology in order to reinforce the kind of research he was doing. When I asked him, uh, looking back on the early 60s and his way of doing sociology at that time, can we say your specific way of looking at the social world was already largely present at your beginnings in Algeria? When he was a young man of 28, 30 years, and he told me, yes, you can, absolutely. So for himself, he was uh, uh, transformed uh, into a certain kind of researcher very, very early. And what is interesting, I will show it to you later, he has been working, going on working of the materials he collected in Algeria during his whole life. How do you do sociology if you didn't learn it, if you didn't go to university in order to have courses in methodology, theory, and so on? He said in the interviews he made, I jumped into the water, as it is for children thrown into the water. They learn to swim. Okay, but what I did, uh, what I did not, uh, not know was exactly what I was making exactly of the credit analysis, or the analysis of the gift, for example, the analysis of the gift is something that I found early. The temporal structures of the gift, all these good things. I knew I was doing something, but you know, the same method that I used, I would not have been able to develop, and in particular, the role of the particular case. So he is telling us that when he started doing research, he had not an explicit methodology, not a clear theory of the social world, but what he was doing is uh, a sort of grounded theory, as the Americans say in the 60s, Plaza and Strauss. He was developing his sociology and his social theory in the field, in the confrontation with the objects he was doing research on, and he was transforming his experiences in first uh, theoretical approaches. And looking once again back on, on the importance of the Algerian experience for all his work, he told me, during my years in Algeria, I could accumulate a capital of sociological questions that nourish my work during the rest of my life. It's a very uh, important remark, he says, all his theory, as in the sens pratique, practical sense, and other books, have been developed 40 years before, before he made male domination, for example, I come back on this, as a very young researcher without a clear formation as a social scientist. Let's have a look on photography and Bourdieu. As I told you, he made some 3,000 photographs he kept them in shoe boxes uh, at his home, 
And as he told me, quite often he took them out, had a look on them, and as you can see later on, a lot of his works coming 30 years later than the research in Algeria are based on this visual material. So it was this kind of stuff uh, he, he used regularly in order to do his uh, theoretical work. What are the functions of photography in his work? The first one is photographs were a kind of ethnographic notebook for him. Bourdieu's intensive practice of photographing a wide variety of situations and motives also fulfilled the function of relieving the burden of participating observation, a means of decelerating and reducing complexity. He said always to me it was overwhelming to be in that country in times of war. Uh, you had to look at um, thousands of things at the same time. Photographs could allow me to take these pictures home and have a look on them several times coming back to the situations and uh, looking on its details. So it is a kind of ethnographic notebook, uh, this uh, archive of photographs. Later on, the photographs which one can look at again and again in peace as well as the sound recordings which one can listen to again and again, allow one to perceive subtleties which are at first glance, which at first glance have escaped one's notice, or which for reasons of discretion during the interviews cannot be observed in detail. One thing, just that, um, besides what I'm saying, he had bought his first camera in Germany, the best model he could find in 1958, he, had, uh, he took all the, the earnings of one month in order to pay this camera and this camera had a specificity. He uh, had sold it on uh, the stomach and looked inside the lens from above. It was very important for the pictures you will see because very often they are stolen pictures. Uh, pictures of women uh, and taking photographs of women in uh, North African countries was very uh, difficult. Uh, there are a lot of taboos about that. And so this kind of camera allowed him to uh, take this kind of, of pictures. <coughs> On the other hand, going together with this, photography as a means of material ethnology. Bourdieu also mentions in our exchange that he also used photography to record observations for later use. For example, sometimes I took photographs for the sole reason that I could remember them later, to be able to describe something later. Or I took photographs of objects that I could not take with me. There was a marriage lamp, for example, which I photographed so that I could later examine how it was made. Another kind of storage, storage of experiences. And uh, so he had a sort of photographic museum with all the the objects uh, which was int uh, which were interesting for him. After that, photography was for him a way of objectifying a devastating reality. The conditions were dramatic, he said, but not as dramatic as often claimed. And I was there and I saw it all, and it was all so complicated and went far beyond my means. When they told me things, I would sometimes take me two or three days to understand it all, complicated names of places or tribes, numbers of lost cattle and other lost commodities, and I was totally overcome by it all. In this respect, any help was good, and photography was really a way of trying to come to terms with the shock of this devastating reality. Another function of photography for him as a becoming sociologist he used them as gifts and door openers. He reports several times in our meetings, in our conversations, that taking photographs under the difficult conditions of a war-torn country made it easier to establish contact and build up relationship of trust with the inhabitants, and that he knew how to use this mean very strategically. 
And very important, I think, in order to understand the role of photography in his whole work, in his oeuvre. Visual documents were for him theory generators. Actually, we're working on photographs and the relationship with this theory of habitus. And I think the visual component of the habitus theory has not been yet uh, analyzed and I think it will play a very important role in understanding theory of habitus. What is he saying concerning theory generators in form of photographs? Produce reconstruction of his dealings the photography also revealed that it provided him with important impulses in generating questions and constructing objects, and that over the decades he was able to gain new research themes from it by looking at his visual testimonies. This can be exemplified by the theme of male domination, perhaps you know that, I think it's uh, translated into Spanish to which Bourdieu devoted repeated analyses over a period of four decades, relying directly on his visual documents, in particular the female hexes. Here you see six books, the first one published in 1961 or two, and after that Algérie Soissante, uh, it's uh, the theory of disruption, uh, published in, into Spanish too, uh, published in 1970. After that, Esquisse d'une théorie de la pratique, published also in the 70s. Le Sens Pratique, which was for him the most important book he made, 1980. After that, an article in Acte de la Recherche, his personal review of sociology, published in the 90s. And the book Male Domination, published in, I think, 90. 96, 98, I don't, I don't know exactly. What's interesting, when he did his book on main domination, he took once again the pictures he made in Algeria, and he published them in journals like Arte la Recherche as a kind of accompanying his discourses, his analyses. So you see inside these publications a kind of dialogue between the visual component and the text he published and his theoretical analyses. And so you can see that during nearly 40 years, these pictures have been accompanying his work as a social researcher, and they always serve to him very late, much later than the research in Algeria, to uh, work on the same topics in always a new way. He had developed until the 1960s quite a lot of new theoretical approaches and so he took the visual sociology, the photographs made in the 1950s and 60s, beginning of 60s, and made new interpretations of this photographic material. Publications too, he, he used them to accompany his books, I said aesthetic needs. Come, let's come to some pictures. And after that I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the, the different topics of research he developed in Algeria. Here you see some pictures of him, a street photographer. Later on I, I would bet be interesting to come back. Sorry. Oh, what did I do now? Sorry. When he comes back to his photography in, in our conversations, um, he tells us himself why the, the visual testimonies are important for him. I give one more citation of this. For example, he said to me, there's a photo that is very typical of this that I used for the cover for Travail et Travail en Algérie. It's a picture of farm workers on the Mutidia plain nearby Algiers. They are working in line, spraying sulfate that is being pumped through a hose 
like uh, them, uh, linking them to a machine transporting the sulfate. Five or six of them are moving forward, perhaps more. The picture is very good to portray for the circumstances of these people. And at the same time, you see the industrialization of farm work on these big colonial farms that, compared to the French farming industry, were very advanced. I spoke briefly with some of these people who earned the pittance as farm workers and who worked their lit uh, own little plot of land on the edge of the big estate. Here you see a picture of these workers working for the colonial dominant. And uh, he took some, I think a dozen of these kind of photographs of the same people. So I think it was really important for him and these, are, these pictures are in contrast with other pictures of traditional farm workers. Let's come back a little bit on, to the situation in Algeria, Algeria uh, which gave nascence to Bourdieu as a sociologist. As I already said, he named Algeria a giant sociological lab full of historical contradictions and cultural lags. A country full of profound contradictions and tensions, a pre-capitalist system with a pre-market logic and its anti-economist ethics of economy have to face the brutal enforcement of capitalism of profoundly foreign economic principles. This situation for him was um, the starting point of his sociology, because sociology always starts with contradictions, with situations that are not clear, and with social questions. And here he had to do with a very uh, traumatic social question. You have a country with, a, with traditional ethics, with a traditional economy of subsistence. You have a country with uh, 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 very important role of family in the production system. You haven't got anything uh, like a capitalist market. And in some few years, the whole situation in this country changed with the colonial system. The colonialist people <coughs> entered market logic into this country and produced a disruption in the traditional uh, uh, manner of, of way of life in the gut. What are the other contradictions concerning uh, the, the entrance of colonial power in, in Algeria? A tra traditional society and a pre-modern habitus meet with a new mode of economic commerce and logic of action that is inconsistent with all social rules that have been valid for generations. Ethics of brotherly love, reciprocity of duty of gifts. Citation of Bourdieu. So for him, for himself, being in a country far away from his home, where he transformed himself from philosopher to sociologist, these kind of contradictions between two different types of uh, society was uh, the starting point of sociological reflection. We have the decline of agricultural production methods. You see below the countryside as it was before, and uh, above you see the new kinds of production installed by colonial power. And what he was especially uh, interested in was the economic precarization of the population. And one of his books uh, is named Uprooting, uh, a society that has been uprooted by the colonial uh, violence. A concrete form of this uprooting was that the colonial power, France, displaced two million people from their homes in a kind of camp. And uh, this, I come back to this later on. Uh, but this, uh, the, the dis 
destruction of the traditional society became um, a clear form, a materialization. He said that he would talk some 40 minutes, I have to go on. Uh, some aspects on co uh, concerning the photography of Bourdieu. What was he doing with his camera? He used it for observation, description, analysis and theoretical framing of social realities. He has been working on social representations in Algeria. The sexual division of labour was very important for him and the uh, male dom domination, his late book, uh, Based, was based on what he has uh, experienced over there. He was very interested in body techniques, hexes of people and their, um, their physical habitus. He worked on elementary forms of exchange, the ethics of gift exchange and reciprocity. And this is the contrary of capitalist uh, market logic, uh, the, the, the obligation to give first. And after that, the obligation to receive and to accept and to that. And the, an, an enormous market exchange has nothing to do with this kind of ethics. He worked about the structures of time, of the agrarian society, rituals of sociability, vestimentary codes. There are a lot of uh, um, aspects of this in his different books on Algeria. He worked on family strategies and uh, he worked on social reproduction, structures of kinship and genealogical order, social inequalities in housing, household and time budget. Uh, with the Statistical Office of France, he made quite a lot of surveys concerning this household and time budget. He was interested in the social social analysis on um, oral testimonies. He started as a qualitative researcher at the same time when he did his statistic on households. And he used the photographic visualization of social structures, qualitative interviews and so on. I will stop soon, see some more pictures. These are the camps I've been talking on, constructed by, the, by France, and uh, two million people were forced to leave their homes to go there. And what was very interesting, I will stop with that, in, the, in 2006 I went to the same places where Bourdieu has took his photographs uh, some 50 years before, and uh, I got to the place he had analyzed in his book in a very detailed manner, Jebakra. If you see here once again, uh, these are the distracted houses of the Algerians. Okay. And these are the camps, uh, which, uh, what he said, looked like uh, the camps of an army, very uh, easy to control. A panopticon, as said Michel Foucault, to this kind of architecture. And uh, Bourdieu, at, in the interviews we, we had, said at that time, I was sure once the colonial power had left Algeria, France had, the French had gone home, uh, the destruction of the traditional society couldn't be repaired. And he said, I was sure that people who had been forced to live in these camps wouldn't go back to their homes. And I went to Algeria with some five, six PhD students in order to have a look on this hypothesis. And we found, as I said before, Jebabra, the same camp, still existing. Uh, people living under conditions very near to what would you found at that moment a high degree of precarization. And you see there are some other books on the left, Chebabra 50 years later. On the right, Chebabra at the moment Bourdieu took the pictures from 1961. And to finish, in Chebabra we found two adults, the two boys you see in this photograph, Bourdieu took 50 years before. 
and they was still living in Jabatran. And so Bourdieu was right in thinking that the destruction the colonial system uh, provides can't be repaired. The traditional society has been uprooted and has been lost. And he wanted to be a sort of observer of this kind of destruction and he gave us testimonies of this in four of his books. Thank you for your attention and uh, if you have questions I would be happy to try to answer them.